From data sent back by Ranger, Surveyor, and Lunar Orbiter, NASA selected the first sites for lunar landing. How will it feel to run on the surface of the moon, where the pull of gravity is only one-sixth that of Earth? The National Aeronautics and Space Administration is seeking answers to this question in on the moon has a decided advantage. shows the Apollo 11 mission highlights. After computers plot the trajectory necessary to intercept the moon, the third stage engine is restarted and the astronauts begin their three-day journey. The command and service modules separate. And meet and attach themselves to the lunar module. Continuing on, the spacecraft's speed increases as a result of the pulling influence of the moon's gravity. If all is going well, the service module engine will be fired, slowing them enough to go into lunar orbit.
It is at this point that Armstrong and Aldrin crawl through the connecting tunnel into the lunar module. After aligning their guidance and navigation systems, the lunar module's engine is fired as a braking maneuver and to regulate their descent. The command pilot will look for the smoothest area to land on. And finally, touch down. Before doing anything else, the two men will prepare to launch themselves back into lunar orbit. Then, astronaut Neil Armstrong will descend the last few feet by ladder to the moon's surface. Approximately 30 minutes later, he will be joined by Aldrin and the two will explore, sample and set their experiments. About 22 hours after landing, they will launch themselves off the moon. Rejoin Collins in the command module and prepare for the journey back to Earth and a Pacific recovery. This is Houston, F2, 1 160th second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, although the surface appears to be uh, very very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Yeah, I'm going to step off the lamb now. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And about two or three or maybe four easy paces can bring you to a fairly smooth uh, stop.
Roger, Aquarius, and you go for the burn. Okay, Aquarius, you're looking good. Okay, you're looking at 1685 now, Jack. Okay, you're uh, going to residuals, proceed. Okay, when you say going to residuals, you mean uh, don't uh, trim them, is that right? That's affirmative, uh, no trim required. Okay, Houston, burn's complete. Now we have to talk about uh, power down and uh, what do you want us to do with the, uh, the thing? Roger, uh, we're looking at that right now and uh, you'll be the first one to get to work. Quite tight. The sequence right. camera, not the uh, not the still, the uh, 16 millimeter. Well, oh, yeah, I stand corrected. But the still cameras are going to get a workout. Yeah. How many frames does this make? You know, per second? No, I I'm not, I don't remember exactly how many. It's like the stop uh, frame photography that we. Like the word fantastic has been sort of degraded. Yeah. Stafford used it so much. And that's what he meant. putting your window guard in place there and uh, back up to the ISA right now. The little bar that he just put across the window is... Uh he shot back through the hatch again. There are two hatches on the limb. This one, of course, leads from the limb to the command module. And then there's another hatch which is in front of them and below them as they look forward out the limb windows. And that is the hatch which leads to the ladder and down to the moon when they get there. Try go home, wait, Charlie, to get back in the room again. But now I'm going to try again. Let me see if I can make out what I'm seeing. I haven't been able to do so far. That's the earth, and we have a very. Can you tell us, uh, it appears to us that there are two distinct uh, uh, cloud formations uh, trending uh, east-west, one approximately about around the equator and one around uh, 30 uh, or so uh, south latitude. Uh, is, uh, could you tell us exactly where those cross the, the land masses are? Oh, uh, yes, they, they cross uh, just 
Uh, it's getting a lot better now, 11. Uh, Mike, you coming in uh, five by. I got a good... Well, I put on a cost time. I know about this ahead of time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? Looks like uh, Neil is coming in five by there. Uh, 11, uh, Mike, see you in the background. Uh, the definition is uh, really outstanding. The uh, colors are good. Uh, it's a real good picture we're getting here. All right, you copy, and we see the disc key flashing with a 651. In fact, we can read registers one and two quite clearly. Aerial high gain uh, angle telling us which way it is. Uh, copy. That's a beautiful picture. Clarity is out here. out of the command module. There are two, one in swim one and one in swim two. We have word now that we are 11 and a half miles to the... Spacecraft is alongside the Hornet now. Lines have been thrown to it, shot to it actually, and then uh, pulled in. Lieutenant Hattelberg is the one not in the frogman suit, in the rubber raft and the other three frogmen are on the sides of the spacecraft and standing on the flotation collar. Told that uh, the reason uh, they use nylon instead of wire uh, is for safety's sake mainly, and it'll stretch. Yeah. Lapped up while it was out there floating around. A little greenish slime that you've been talking about. <laughs> the spacecraft will be put on a dolly and rolled up beside the MQF as soon as they get that uh, orange flotation ring off and that uh, plastic tunnel will be, there goes the flotation ring, and then put in a uh, decontamination chamber, which is like a tank that's flooded with uh, the Clorox-like material, the sodium hypochlorite. Left in there 20 minutes to kill any germs that may be clinging to those suitcases. Or you know, Ron, we'll be able to uh, see uh, the figure of... 